All right, let's get started. So welcome everyone to our tutorial on PyProcess Book to PyVision migration. So I'm pretty excited. This is the fourth tutorial in a series of tutorials we've been doing on uh, YouTube Live, and I've been having a great time. Uh, so I guess let's get started. So I've I've met quite a few people. <laughs> I went through the list of names of pre-registrations before. Uh, my name's Alex. I've been with OSISoft for 11 years now, and I lead our learning department in the Asia-Pacific region. With me, I've got Jerome, who will be... Uh, who will be moderating the chat and answering questions that I didn't get to. Uh, in, in past sessions, we've had too many questions for me to answer, but um, he's done a good job there. So feel free to chat as I'm going along. Uh, if I don't get to your question, then someone else will. All right. So while we're here, I just had a fun, fun conversation uh, with, with Jerome before this uh, on, should I start with the carrot or the stick? Um, I, you described this as the stick. So why we're here is process book is uh, gradually retiring after 25 years of service. Um, we currently, well, the good news is that we have tooling to really help you along to migrate away from PyProcessBook and onto PyVision. So this is the roadmap for uh, closing down of different, uh, different aspects of PyProcessBook support. But right now we have the tooling and process book is still being sold, but uh, we, we're close to end of sales of this of that product. All right. So really, why are we here, or what is our purpose of this tutorial? Uh, we are given a selection of PyProcess book displays. We're going to migrate them all to PyVision, and we're going to going to talk about different uh, different uh, hiccups and different speed bumps that can happen uh, during the migration. You've all got access, well, anyone who pre-registered has access to a virtual environment, and you'll be able to follow along and do the migration as well. That being said, I'm going to assume that you have at least a baseline Pi system knowledge. If you're completely new to the Pi system, there's a free one hour pre-recorded class that I really recommend you take before this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have the knowledge in this Pi system basics class. So the link is down below, Pi System Basics. You can actually pause this stream, go and take that class, and then come back if you want to. So a little bit of logistics. You're in control of the stream. So if you're not familiar with YouTube Live, uh, you can pause and play this stream. You can go backwards. You obviously can't go forwards past what, what's been recorded yet, but uh, if I'm going too fast, you can slow me down or you can pause me. So there's no real, uh, there's no, there's no real need to, um, to stop and start and uh, it, you're in control. Uh, that being said, your virtual environments will only stay running until 3 p.m. Uh, AEDT or midday uh, Perth time, so uh, AWST. So make sure you're finished before then, otherwise your virtual environments will be, uh, will be destroyed and ask questions in live chat. Uh, I'll try and get to the questions that I can get to, uh, otherwise Jerome will, um, will answer the questions there. And I've got a few colleagues uh, that have joined up as well. Uh, I also recommend having the live stream on one monitor and the remote connection, the virtual connection, uh, if you pre-registered on, on the other monitor. And if you only have one monitor, then open the live stream on your phone or something like that, because it'll be much easier to follow along. Okay, and with that, uh, let's migrate some displays. But before we migrate some displays, uh, I want to go over a little bit about what we're actually doing here and putting what we're doing in a, in a bigger perspective. So here we've got, in fact, here we go. I'm going to be a character in this little presentation here. I'm going to go over how, from a very broad perspective, how the Pi system works, how process book works, and how Pi Vision works, and why we would want to, and what actually happens when we migrate displays between the two. So on the very left-hand side uh, here, we have a distri distributed control system. 
And on the very right hand side here, we have, well, me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm right here. I'd like to access, uh, I'd, I'd like to see what my, say for example, my pumps uh, are doing that are attached to my control system. Now everything in between here is uh, ways of obtaining data from the DCS or uh, part of the Pi system. So let's draw out the components and I'll add in what we're doing today. So over here, the DCS has to export its data in some format. The most common way of getting data from industrial equipment is OPC, whether that's OPC DA, OPC UA, depending on what generation. Now, we have a component of the Pi system. So this is where the Pi system starts. This here is an OPC server. We have a OPC interface or connector, depending on what generation you're on. This OPC interface or connector reads from our OPC server, so all of the sensors on all of our equipment are constantly being read from by our DCS and our OPC server, and we're reading from them and storing everything they're doing in the PyData archive. All of that data is going into what we call archives. They get slowly filled up. And every sensor reading from all of our equipment is stored in here. On the other side here, now, on my PC, so let's draw out my PC. This is my PC. I have an application called Process Book running. This process book uh, runs PDI files, runs a uh, runs process book dashboard files, and it reads from the data archive. So there's a few more components here to mention. There is asset framework, and there is a vision server. I'm using process book. I open a maybe uh, display dot PDI. This PDI file works a little bit like a you can, you can imagine it like a Word document. You open up a Word document in Microsoft Word. It shows you it shows you some paragraphs of text. You open up a PDI file in process book. It shows you a dashboard containing trends. So we connect with process book, we open up this PDI file, it needs to populate the data inside this trend. It connects to both our data archive and our asset framework server, depending on how our data is referenced. So we want to see the bearing temperature of our pump number six. And it shows us by reading data from the data archive and from asset framework server. So that's the old generation. Here we've got another application running on my PC. This is a browser. This browser is going to go to a web page. This web page happens to be the web page of this PyVision server. And PyVision stores display details and accesses the data archive and asset framework on behalf of our user here. So here I want to open up a display. PyVision has this trend. It needs to populate the data. So it connects on my behalf to our data archive to asset framework and then gives me the data that I want to see. So that's how a PyVision display works. 
So why we're here is process book is slowly going away. Uh, end of support was going to be uh, the, the final day of 2024. So what do we do uh, to, what, what do we do to uh, try and try and compensate for that? So we've got this utility that's also installed in our client machine that we're going to use today. DB division migration utility. Didn't quite fit. This PB division migration utility, you import displays, PDI files. Once you import a display, it will connect to PyVision, convert this display, convert this display to a PyVision display, and then save that PyVision display on the, well, on the PyVision server for all intents and purposes. This display is saved here once it's converted to PyVision's format. Then after that, our user with our browser can visit PyVision and then get our old process book display and then see everything on it. So what we're doing today is we are going to use this utility to import a whole bunch of old displays with different using different features of PyProcessBook into PyVision. Right. So in essence, after this, me, I'm not the only user of the system. There are also many other users of the system. Maybe one up here. They're all running browsers. And they can connect to PyVision as well. And they can all get my same display. Moving to PyVision not only <laughs> gives you support past 2025, but also enables uh, much more powerful sharing and publishing of displays and uh, display management. So we'll take a little look at that as well while we're doing these display migrations. Right, let's migrate some displays. So at the start of this session, uh, I told everyone to get connected. If you did pre-register for a connection link, please open that up. You should see something like this. Your background may be different. I changed it because the <laughs> color didn't really work with the stream. But open up the PyVision link on the desktop. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to really do what I just did with my, uh, with my diagram there. The first thing that I did, well, the first thing that I did is open up process book. In fact, let's do that first. Minimize vision. We're going to open up some old process book displays and then see what they look like. So we've got this folder here. This folder is very similar to something you would have in your organization, a folder full of, full of process book PDIs. So let's go to the desktop, open up Vision PB displays and double click on PB displays to import. We have two folders here. One is called Flynn which is a folder containing lots of uh, production displays for, a, uh, for an industrial company. And we also have a folder called things that can go wrong to demonstrate some of the different uh, features that can't be imported into Vision. So we'll take a look at that a little later. Let's open up Flynn and let's open up the home PDI. So to get here, I opened up Vision PB Displays. I navigated to Displays to Import and then Flynn, and then opened up Home. First boot of Process Book may take a little while, but once that's open, we'll see what it looks like.
once home's open, we can see that this is actually a network of displays. So we have a few displays here. Uh, we can click on plant view. It should open up our plant view display. And that should show us some details about the plant. So we have some data coming from our PyData archive here. This, this data is actually asset framework relative. We have a home button on the top right hand corner here. Well, it's hiding a little bit. <laughs> there we go. We have a home button on the top, top right hand corner here that brings us back to home once I get reconnected. So we can see this is a network of displays. Back on the PyVision side, we do have some displays once we open PyVision. So again, to get where I just went, I minimize process book and open up the PyVision link on your desktop to get there. We have some partially imported high process book displays. This is the old method of importing them. This really just has imports them as static SVGs. They import as read-only, but they work. And this feature has been around for quite a few years now. So we can still access these process book displays here, but they're all read-only. We can't modify them. They're not native PyVision displays. So that's what we've got right now. We're going to import that series of process book displays using the Pi process book to PyVision migration utility. Looks like our system is experiencing heavy usage. I might spend this time to answer a couple of questions. Uh, looks like Jerome's answered them all, thanks. So we'll talk about SQ SQC in a little bit. Other questions that have come up. Can you have a single PyVision server to multiple data archives? Yes, you can. In the PyVision configuration, you can point it to multiple Py data archives. So we're going to use the migration utility to migrate now. Back to the desktop. We're going to do a few things. So important first step is to open up the vision to PB displays utility. The process, the process book to vision migration utility will not let you migrate. Uh, displays from a network location. They have to be a local directory. So we need to copy this PB displays to import over to a local directory. So I'm going to move it to my desktop. So double click on vision PB displays. Drag and copy the PB displays to import folder. So you've got it locally. Next, open up PyProcess Book to PyVision Migration Utility. We'll take a look here. We'll give everyone a few seconds to get that open. By the way, these steps are really the, the only steps you need to follow to keep up. Uh, all, everything else I've just been showing you around. 
So right now, make sure you have this PB displays to import folder, which you get to from clicking on the Vision PB dis displays uh, network directory. Copy it locally and then open up the migration tool. There's the shortcut on the desktop. Once that's open, we want to add files. We're going to add folders. So we're going to add a folder structure and have it import the entire folder structure. Uh, there's quite a few questions uh, in the chat regarding supporting of different features, especially SQC. I'm going to talk a little bit about that during the migration, and we'll we'll see what's supported and what's not. SQC uh, can't move over because the uh, because PyVision doesn't have any SQC charts. There are other possible solutions though. So we're going to add folders. And on our desktop, we have PB displays to import. We've gone add files, add folders, and find this PB displays to import. We can look at the folder structure here. So we see that there's quite a few displays in a few different subfolders. We're going to check the box right at the top and have it run an analysis on all of the different displays in the subfolders. So run analysis. So to get here, I said add files, add folders. I check the box next to the folder right up the top, and then run analysis. Once the analysis has been run, we can see what can be migrated and what can't be, and why. So we've got quite a few can be fully migrated. And we've got a few that can't be fully migrated. So there's a few here inside the things that can go wrong folder. We've got a PyData Archive monitoring display, which has VBA code. VBA code is one of the things that can't be migrated. SQC charts in this one, and ActiveX controls as well. So these things can't be migrated. There's been a lot of talk about SQC. Uh, we, do, we, have, uh, we have workshops that are, well, that, that are all around. Uh, getting these different things uh, migrated over. So there are it's it's not a simple button press for these three things, but will require some other development and customization. So if you are in this situation where your organization relies on these types of things that can't be migrated easily, uh, talk to your account manager about solutions that you could that you could use. Right. I'm going to check all the boxes and then I'm going to migrate displays. Before I do, one thing is to note is you can export the VBA. So this VBA code that's in this display, I can export it and extract it as a text file. It doesn't do much more than that, but it's a good reference. So if I click on export VBA here and I go view reports and open reports folder, there'll be a text document containing the 
VBA code for that display, which is right here. Additionally, in this reports folder, we have this migration analysis. So that contains even more information than the, UI, UI, the user interface does. You can take a look at that if you like. So I'm going to migrate displays. Again, to check to go here, I just clicked on migrate displays. There's a few things we need to type in here. First off, we need to type in the address of our PyVision server. PySIV01 slash PyVision is the address of our vision server. And we can connect. Once we're connected, it appends this slash utility. You don't need to type that manually, it just appends it. This is the endpoint for the utility migration. We're going to choose a few options here. Destination PyVision folder. We're going to choose a folder inside PyVision to import this whole folder structure. So I'm going to say choose. And we've pre-made folders for everyone inside students. And I am PyClient11, so I'm going to import it into student11. So click on destination PyVision folder. Find your student number up the top of your tab. So I am student number 11. Mine says PyClient11. So I'm going to check the student 11 box. Now, some, some of you may also be student 11 because you're on different environments. We have uh, five different uh, versions of this running with everyone connecting. So check the correct box. Make sure you're choosing your student number. So on your browser tab, you'll have a number at the end. Choose that number. I'm going to go OK on here. The target display owner, by default, the owner will be us. So right now, my name is student11. Uh, I will be the owner of all of these displays. What this means is I will have full control over the displays. I'll be able to delete them. I'll be able to edit the security on the displays. If you don't want the person that imports the displays to be the owner, you can choose a different one. But we're going to just leave it to choose ourselves. Display access. Let's see what this is. So I've just ch chosen choose on display access, and I can set up the security for the displays. We've got read write access to any of these different identities. These identities are actually asset framework security identities. So Vision will, Vision's security model will replicate that of asset framework in that any identity mappings that are set up or any identities that are set up in Asset Framework will be available here to choose read-write permission. We're going to make the dashboard administrators have write access to these displays and the operators have read access to the displays. It's an example of uh, security setup you could do. And right now, world has read access. I'll just leave that on. Everyone that can connect to vision can see these displays. We could remove this if we wanted to, so only our operators could see. Okay. But we'll be able to see nonetheless our logged in user because our logged in user 
is the display owner. The duplicate file names, we can skip that. That's if we've done more than one import. This is a really good thing to note in that if you change your process book displays, you can re-import them and it will overwrite the ones that have changed or it'll skip the ones that have changed. We're going to check the box next to persist folder structure from migrated items. This is fairly important, especially if you've got displays, if you've got a network of displays that all have buttons that connect to each other, those will be preserved uh, if you persist folder structure for migrated items. And we do have a network of displays, so we definitely want this. Last option is migrating Pi calculation data sets. So as of PyVision 2020, uh, Pi calculation data sets are supported. So if you've got any custom calculations written inside process book displays, these can be imported as well. Before I click OK, this is the setup. I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to make sure your setup is correct. Your setup should be really exactly the same, except for this student number. You should get that from your browser tab. Right. I'm going to click OK here. So we're waiting for the import and migration completed. Right, after it's been completed, let's go to Vision and see what happened. I'm going to open up PyVision. Down inside the folders, I'm going to go into the Students folder. You should only see student01 and your own student number. So click into your own student number and you should see your PB displays to import folder and the displays that you just imported. So first off, let's see these production displays from Flynn. We're going to go into the home and we're going to start clicking on these. So things look slightly different. The user interface for vision and displays, displays in vision in general do look slightly different than process book. I'm going to go into the plant view. See, it looks very similar. We can go home, maybe look at the generator. and we're all imported. Note that unlike older versions of PyVision with the imports, we have full read write access to this. So we can, because we're the display owner and we have write access to it, we can put this in mod modify mode and move things around if we want to. We can even save the display. So let's look at some of the things that could not be moved over. I'm going to go back into my folder, into the things that can go wrong folder. We see two displays, Pi Data Arch Archive Monitoring, that one had some uh, VBA code inside that was not imported, so anything that that VBA code did will not be active in PyVision. Everything else will be there just fine. So most of the display uh, is just fine and it uh, moved over and we can see the data moving. The other one though is a display specifically designed with everything that is not supported. So 
but let's open up the same thing in process book. I'm going to go into things that can go wrong inside process book and open up things that can go wrong dot PDI. So we see things are a little bit different. And really this is everything that will not be, well, will either be partially migrated or uh, fail to be migrated over. The first and most obvious thing, there's an ActiveX control here that shows the PyData Archive module database. That is just empty. That will not be imported over. There are custom objects that have been created in the process book display. There's this star with the middle missing, and there's also this connector. These will be imported over, but they may look slightly different. The other thing that's different is in process book, we've, uh, we've used our favorite font here, Comic Sans, and that changes to Arial when it's imported over. Uh, you can only have one font in PyVision, which is Arial. Some other things worth noting is the, is the unit conversions. So in process book, you could do unit conversions if you were, if you were using uh, AF2 objects. So if you're using asset framework to get data to put into process book displays, then you could do unit, uh, live unit conversions. So here we've imported the bearing temperature of pump number one in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. But when it's imported over, well, that was the vision one. You can see that they're both actually in Celsius in vision, but they're in Celsius and Fahrenheit in process book. So the live unit conversions will not be imported over. And there's other, there's minor graphical issues. So our uh, bars will, will look slightly different and some of the objects will not be there or look different. So the duck is, is not supported in vision. I'm very sorry to say to everyone who really loves the duck. And this bottle is a different color. So note that some of your symbols may change colors and may look slightly different when you import. But the thing that uh, is getting a lot of people talking in chat is SQC. So this SQC chart, if we look at the vision display, is not present at all. We do have a link here to an article or to a webinar, and we have an associated uh, article about this on uh, how to well on different different ways you can employ to actually do this. One of them being a workshop uh, with us, and uh, there are there are quite a few workarounds, and Jerome's discussed a lot of them in the in the chat already with those that were that were active in this discussion. I'm sorry, Mike, your, your, your duck factory, you're gonna to have to find a different symbol. One thing to note with the symbols, uh, some of them will, will change how they look, but you can always import a picture. You can import a picture of whatever you like and, and the pictures will actually import over. We just changed our symbol library between, the, between Pi process book and vision. So that's all we have for display migration. I was going to leave the rest of the time for, oh, I'll, I'll do a little, a little wrap up and then we'll have some Q&A. Jerome wants me to cover the reports. I can, I can go over some of the reports. So with the, with the migration, I've still got that open. We can click on view reports and we can take a look at the migration report. 
There we go. We just see that it's migrated and links to the different vision displays. Analysis report. Here's that report that I showed in the folder before. That's opening up now. some questions can you rename the vision link and name after migration uh, the answer to that should be yes in display management uh, when that pops up when we clone these vms the excel license fall, falls off just cancel uh, they'll be uh they'll be destroyed in a couple of hours anyway okay so we can see the report here uh what failed and why it failed uh, some interesting things uh this is much more detailed so all of the, so here we've got quite a lot of the Flynn displays. A few of the uh, components were partially migrated, not fully migrated. So we've got the font styles. They wouldn't be migrated. A lot of font styles. We've got, yeah, show scales inside, uh, some bars. Uh, that's not supported in Vision. So some things will look slightly different, but you can see in detail what was and what was not, uh, which is fairly useful. You can go into these displays and fix things up if they if they don't look how you want them to look afterwards. Right, so that report that I just opened, that is in the reports folder that you can open here. And after that's finished, you can always copy that off and keep a record of it. So before we go into a bit more Q&A, uh, I'd like to do a, do a little bit of a wrap up. So this was a very quick uh, intro and hands-on to using the Precious Book Division Migration Utility. We have a full online class uh, on this same topic. So we have a link here. There is also a link down below the video to this same class. Uh, it comes with a virtual environment like you've been using uh, during this session. If you have not used PyVision before and want to learn how to use it from scratch, there is a PyVision Basics class and also a Beyond the Basics class on our learning website. We also have virtual live classroom classes, so taught live by a trainer. It may or may not be me, but uh, we have these running uh, year round uh, based out of both uh, Australia and Singapore and all around the world. So click the link below to see more information about that as well. The next tutorial will run, uh, it will be based on OSSOF cloud services. So if you've got interest in that, uh, please have a chat to your account manager. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun, and that'll happen in around a month. The, the date hasn't been completely finalized yet. So we'll open up to some questions. There's some questions that have come in that haven't been answered yet. Is this for PyVision 2019 as well? Uh, yes. So this migration utility came in in 2019. One of the major differences between 2019 and 2020 is calculation data sets. So those can't be migrated into Vision 2019, but they can be migrated into Vision 2020. For the migration tool, how the security settings configured. Is someone who has the tool installed in my organization able to do this from the client? There are, there is a, there should be a, a Windows group on the Vision server for migration utility users. So it's a elevated privilege. Someone that uses the migration tool has far more privilege than a normal user, but they have to be in a special group 
uh, on the vision server. So there's a local group on the vision server called Pi, I can't recall, recall off the top of my head, but it's Pi Vision Migration, Pi, Pi Vision Migration Utility Users, I think is the name of it. You'll, you'll see it when you see it, but anyone in that group can use the, the migration tool. A, for, for those that are asking for um, extra features, uh, one of the most impactful things you can do is upvote them or write your requests on feedback.osisoft.com. I really recommend you go there, take a look around and upvote features. That's, that's how our development prioritizes new features that are going to be added. Thanks for that addition, Daniel. I said uh, calculation data sets are PyVision 2020 only, but also multiple time ranges on trends. Vision didn't support that until version 2020, so those wouldn't have been migrated in, in 2019. How can you install PyVision? So PyVision is a server that needs to be installed, and you need to have, have purchased a license. So uh, talk with your Talk with your account manager. Once you have a license for PyVision, you install it on server hardware. It's, it, it is really a web server that users connect to and uh, it stores your displays in a backend SQL server and connects to uh, the data archive and asset framework on the user's behalf. Trying to center it like I did before. Oh, because I moved my portrait. There we go. The drawing I had before. This PyVision over here. If you don't have a PyVision server, this is what needs to be installed. So PyVision actually uses a Microsoft SQL server as a backend to actually store all of its displays. The, the, the steps to get PyVision installed are run the installer, connect it to a SQL server. You need to have one of those available. Then after its installation is complete, uh, get a SSL certificate loaded onto it, and then set up these connections to Data Archive and Asset Framework. And after that, users can connect to it and then it will connect to Data Archive and Asset Framework on behalf of the users. This is actually a, a one, one of the unseen benefits to having PyVision is after this, your users, or the majority of your users, are no longer connecting directly to the Data Archive and Asset Framework. So you've got a lot more flexibility in architecture setup. All of the, your user connections are coming into a web server using normal web server, ports, and connections. Well, that, that's if they're looking at displays. If they're, if they're using Data Link or any of the other tools, they will be making direct connections to Data Archive and AF. But a lot of your users, you'll find you can, you can reconfigure things uh, and be a lot more comfortable with connections that way. Can you import the tags that are uh... the question is can can we can we import the can we export the tags that users have created in displays into Excel using the utility? That is possible. The I'm actually not sure if one of the reports will do it, but you can do it on individual displays. If you have a display open, you can export the data, XML or CSV on a particular display, and that will tell you all the tags on it. 
but this report may yes here we go so any of the process book displays that are imported over we see what data they're referring to so all of these are referring to a attribute of a asset framework object but if they're referring to tags I'll try and find a couple with tags These ones are referring to tags. So the report will tell you all the tags being used. I'm looking through some of the questions. Some of these I don't know the answer to off the top of my head. If any of my if any of my um, colleagues can answer them, the if you can migrate pre twenty twelve process books off the top of my head, I'm not sure. VBA code has well, really the same issue as SQC. It won't be imported at all. But we have workshops to guide you through, and you you may find that you can uh, you can use another solution instead. Well, let's take a look at data sets. So Pi Data Archive Monitoring has some data sets in it. This has some process book data sets that were imported over. What it did. <laughs> Let's look at the report and try and find one. Flynn Pumps has one. Yep, yeah, okay. So let's look at Flynn Pumps and see what that looks like. So Flynn plant. Data sets in process book, uh, you could configure custom ad hoc calculations that were done inside the display in PyVision they look a little like this. So the second tab along contains the list of data set calculations that have been configured and they work in very much the same way. You add a, you register a data set and then you choose what summary calculation you'd like on that formula and drag it over to the display. But these have already been configured because they were imported. Where do you get the migration utility tool? If you are licensed for either, if you're licensed for Vision, you can download it. It should be part of the, uh, on the same page that you download Vision through uh, customers.osisoft.com. All right, just a just a few more questions, I guess. We'll we'll hang around for a few minutes and answer any more questions that anyone has. But uh, for all those that attended, thank you very much, and we hope to see you in the next tutorial. But uh, we'll be hanging around in the chat. Uh, I'll tr I'll try and well we'll try and answer any questions that pop up. So thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you all next time.